is rising, you're rising higher, was from the grave, was up from the grave. team. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Come on, give them an applause. <laughs> Done a terrific job. We give God praise for such a day as this. It's the day he has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. 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 This is our Tia Tulsa International Easter Convention for the people watching online, in case you've just joined us and you're wondering what's happening. It's a three-day conference, started yesterday with a powerful word, uh, but delivered by Pastor Patrick Irunda, and uh, we're continuing today. Um, please have your seat, have your seat. I'm really, really excited, <laughs> like so ready to start running ahead of myself, but um, before I even get into that, thank you so much. Those of you who've sacrificed this moment, it's Saturday morning, great time to spend time with your family. Pastor probably would have been out there running and jogging and doing his stuff, but here we are in the presence of the Lord. What a perfect thing to do on a holy Saturday. In the church tradition, this is a holy Saturday. Yesterday was Good Friday, 
Today is Saturday, and tomorrow is Easter Sunday. Holy Saturday is a quiet day in the church history. In fact, you don't, you don't hear about it. You don't hear people saying, oh, it's Easter Saturday. But we hear it's Good Friday. We hear about Easter Sunday, which is the Resurrection Day. And then we hear about Easter Monday. This Easter Monday. And uh, if you come from Africa, right, it's a public holiday. Easter Monday is a public holiday. Good Friday is a public holiday, but not the Saturday is silent. It's in between. My message today, as you can see, the title is Between the Cross and the Resurrection. The in between is what we're talking about, which is the whole Saturday. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, O God. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, O God, for the privilege, the honor to stand before you. Thank you, O God, for the grace that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you that on this day, in such a time, we can remember, O God, the price that you paid on the cross for us. We thank you for you paid it all, Jesus. And this morning, we just come with grateful hearts to give you back the praise and say thank you. Thank you for paying it all. Thank you for taking it on yourself, O God. Whatsoever it is, O Lord, you have taken it all. And this morning, as we look into your word, God, I surrender this holy time to you. I surrender my mouth, I surrender my mind, my whole body and emotions, and everyone under the hearing of my voice. God, I thank you a lot that the word is carried deep, as your word says that your word is a double-edged sword. Lord, I pray that it will indeed do what you've intended it to do in our lives today. May there be a rising, may there be a rising, I decree and declare. Even as I proclaim this word this morning, oh God, I pray that anyone who is down will rise up in the mighty name of Jesus. Anyone feeling hopeless will begin to feel hopeful. Anyone broken will begin to make amends to the glory and honor of your name. God, I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I open up, I want to tell you a quick story. Um, so when I just came to America, I'm originally from Uganda, for the people who don't know me. When, when I just came to America several years ago, it's over 13 years ago, I came, landed in Utah, but then six months later, I decided to relocate to Oklahoma to pursue um, a theological education with Victory Bible College. So I came to Tulsa, I didn't know anyone at all, ended up at Victory Bible College at the BBC Housing. And I met this wonderful friend of mine from Zambia. Her name is Prudence. A lot of you probably know her. Prudence, if you're out there watching, I didn't tell her I would be telling this story. She probably gets shocked, but I love you. Um, so we became really close. And you know, coming from Africa, we're coming with all kinds of experiences from over there. We know how to do church in Africa. We walk miles and miles and miles on foot to go to church. We attend overnights, we do fasting, like we are super obedient when it comes to the church because that's how we're raised. Uh, not to say that in America we are not, but the culture is a little different and so things are done here a little differently. So two Africans, so passionate for God, land on this nation and we're ready to show the Americans that we know how to praise the Lord, that we know how it is done. You guys are just playing, right? And so we were in the uh, school of worship and this one particular course, which was being taught by Miriam Springer, Springer was a worship class, how to lead worship. You know, the praise and worship, that moment, whether as a pastor or as the worship leader, worship director, or a team leader of some sort, like we do here, like what Alan does, you know, or what Grace just did this morning. So that was the course. And so we had to pair up. They say get a partner because there's going to be what? Auditions in the class, and you're being auditioned by the class, your classmates. So I paired up with Prudence. That was a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea, you're in a new culture, the two of you are both new, better get somebody who knows about the culture so there's a balance. But we went and we prepared so hard for our audition. You were supposed to pick one song. Come, sing it in front of people like you would in front of a congregation. 
and do everything that you're supposed to do in that one song. And the song shouldn't last three minutes long. We are Africans, remember? <laughs> so anyway, one thing is Africans don't know how to keep time. Most of our friends know, so we come from with that over here and then now we have to flip that because America is all about time. You gotta be on time for everything. Time management is key and it tells a lot about who you are. It's integrity, it's respect, you don't show up late. So we, we were there on time, practiced so hard and then um, <laughs> they call our name, come to the front, start our song, really fired up. Oh my God, we were so fired up. We started singing, one thing we didn't agree on, there was no leader, there was no backup. We were all leaders and we were all backups. <laughs> so there was already a clash there. And, and we're both loud, right? So Prudence is shouting there, I'm shouting here, and we start speaking in tongues, and who shakarama yelelele, hallelujah, whoo! And we start singing and just go crazy, we lost the key, you know, we, the, the person and the keyboard couldn't stick with us, and, but me and her, we're in the spirit, our eyes are closed. Also, you're supposed to keep with your audience and make sure you're capturing them. No, eyes closed, we are all over the place, oh my God. And I jumped into the class in the congregation and started even binding demons and... <laughs> so, after our three minutes was over, you know, Americans, when people are not feeling good, the color change, right, the red, and the kids, the students are looking confused, they're looking at us like, what? <laughs> but for us, oh my God, we were feeling great. We just delivered a powerful audition, and demons ran out of the door. That's us. So now the audition was being written on paper. Every student had to, to write a word to describe your audition, and so the teacher collected it, gave it to us to read, and she was like, ha, huh, you guys really updated it. We we're like, yeah. She's like, no, not like that. <laughs> She's like, read. So we start reading, and it's saying, chaotic, chaos, no structure, no flow, no order. Oh my God, you could name it confusion, disorganization, like, oh my God, that was a powerful presentation we just did. Well, these people don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you ever felt like that? <laughs> you put in so much energy into something and then only to realize it's all chaos, there's no order. Today I want to talk to you about the chaos of Holy Saturday. The chaos that took place, the mess that was there. You see, Friday, Good Friday is a dark Friday, right? Like we saw yesterday, it was a dark Friday. I don't like to say was because we're still going through it. You say was sounds like some church history, but it's really not. This is life experience. And I pray that God will give me the grace in the next few minutes to really bring it to life. So Good Friday, there's all chaos. Jesus is being crucified. You know, the, the disciples are still pushing and they still hope, okay, he's going to get crucified and then maybe he's just gonna jump out of the cross. Or, you know, the imagination's going wild. Pilate is there, you know, with his team. The Sanhedrins, the Pharisees, there were lots of activities. The women, you know, they all escort him to the cross and he's crucified, that's Good Friday. Too much activities going on, and so it was dark in, in that it was a heavy Friday. There's morning and everything, but it's also loud because of the so many activities. After all that is done, comes Saturday. What next? There's silence. There's total silence. There's total darkness. There's confusion. There's chaos in their minds but nothing they can do again. Christ is already crucified. His body has already been taken to the tomb. The tomb has already been what? Sealed. And Pilate at this point, with his the son Henry, because they were so afraid that Jesus' disciples would go and steal the body from the tomb and then claim that he resurrected, 
they had sealed, the Bible says, it was sealed with a stone and the guards put in place. So at this point, we can only imagine what's going on in the minds of Jesus' followers, the disciples, the church. What was going on exactly on Holy Saturday? Silence, grief, chaos, confusion, doubt, insecurity, disappointment, wondering. What just happened? What mess did we just get ourselves into? This guy claimed he was the savior of the world. He was coming to save us. And remember in the Roman history and the church history, a lot of the followers believed he was this political figure that was coming to just overhaul everything. They didn't really comprehend fully that there was a dying and then there would be a rising. No. You, you guys are the ones listening to me from African nations and other nations other than, you know, America and all that. We know about the coups, the coup d'etats, the takeovers, the military takeovers. They prepare, they come, boom, the government is gone, there's a new management in place. There's a new administration in place, there's no democracy. So in my mind, in my imagination, these guys were thinking that way. Jesus has come, we're going to go, and we're going to overtake and rule. But no, God's way, the Bible says, is too far from our ways. And so Holy Saturday is a total Saturday of confusion. That's why it's so silent, even in the church history. And yet here is the key. You cannot miss this day in your real life. You cannot miss it, because after a Friday, there's a Saturday. Before Sunday, there is a Saturday in your real life. Some of us are going through this day today in our real life. It is a Saturday for you. It's a holy Saturday. It's dark, it's quiet, it's silent, it's confused. There's lots of questions in your mind. You're wondering, will this ever come to pass? Believing in the promise by faith. But what do you do in the middle, in between? The waiting. What do you do? Let's go to the scripture and see what happened. If you go with me to John 21 to 10. And I'll read. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early. While it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved. And she said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and we were going to the tomb. So they both ran together and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes laying there. And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not laying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went again to their own homes. You see, um, from, my, from, my, from my theme, between the cross and the resurrection, this is what happened. So the, the, it, it's, it's self-explanatory, I'm not going to go too much into it. But I really envy Mary Magdalene for her courage running fast to the tomb and checking what happened to my Lord. Is my Lord still there? And then she finds it open and he is not there. And you see the intriguing uh, fact about this is the last part of that scripture, which says, as if they had forgotten what the scripture said, that he must rise again. Holy Saturday is a difficult day. It comes because of so much pressure and chaos and confusion and disappointment. You tend to forget the promise. And a lot of us sitting here or listening to me online, you've forgotten the promise. 
There's that one word that the Lord has given you. There's that one word that has been spoken over you. For some of us, I meet so many people saying it was prophesied to my mother when I was born that I would be serving the Lord. It was spoken to me by a man of God. Oh, God revealed to me that I would be serving him in this manner, in this manner. But you've waited for years and years and years, and now the promise is fading away. It's fading away. This is what happened to the disciples. Saturday came after the Good Friday. Saturday came and they forgot that he had said he would rise again. Their expectations were cut short. And yet the scripture says your expectations will not be cut short. But the chaos, the confusion, the pain, the disappointment caused them to begin to second doubt themselves. But here's where I'm going with that message. You see, it's so easy for us to forget the promise or even relax on the promise. But the enemy, the enemy doesn't forget. The enemy knows that Mangesho has been called to serve God. He knows that truly well. And so he does not rest. As you're there sitting, resting, wondering, second guessing, did God really call me into this? Am I really in the right place? Is this really the right assignment? The enemy knows truly well. He knows you more than you even know yourself. Because this is what the enemy does. See, he cannot take the promise away from you. But you can give him power to take that promise away from you. Only you can grant him that access. He doesn't have the right. So this is what happened to the disciples. They start asking, they've taken him away. No, he rose. He promised he would rise. Nobody took him away. And so Mary is crying. And this is the one thing about Holy Saturday. If you're going through that moment of confusion where you don't know where to turn again, where you don't know, what, you don't know who to talk to again, it's like this is too much. I feel like I've become a total nuisance every time you're the one sending prayer requests. Please pray for me, please pray for me, please pray for me. Moments come when you decide, you know what? This is a little too much. I can't handle it again. In that moment, I want to encourage you, run to the empty tomb like Mary Magdalene did. Take, flee like Pastor Patrick told us yesterday. Run as fast as your feet can take you to the tomb. Even if you don't know what's going to come out of it, it's the most secret place you can be at. It's the most safest place you can be at. Mary Magdalene and the disciples ran to the tomb. The Bible says she sat opposite to the tomb, waiting for whatever may come. The rest of the, the disciples went there. Other men went there to see and prove that the tomb was indeed empty. They left. Mary sat there, the two Marys, they sat there, they waited. They said, we are not leaving. We will sit here. We don't know what's coming next. We don't know how it's going to appear. But at least they remembered the promise at that moment. They remembered while others went back to their homes, they sat. The Bible said they waited. And guess who? Jesus appeared to first. It was Mary. He greeted her. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's my prayer that in your moment of total confusion, total darkness, total disappointment, to remember the promise of the rising. Because in every falling, there is a rising. The Bible says, if you know the Apostle Creed, there's a portion that says, I won't go to it, but I need you to go to the Apostle's Creed and read the whole of it, and then go to the scripture reference. The Bible says, he descended into hell. Christ descended into hell. And it's my imagination. My imagination tells me that must have been the, the Saturday. Friday and then Saturday he descended into hell. And what did he go to do there? Hallelujah. He went to proclaim the resurrecting power. He proclaimed 
to the souls over there. And he touched them and he resurrected them with him. And he said, yeah, you've been fallen, but you can rise again. And then what, what this? What does he do again? The Bible says he took the keys. Oh, hallelujah. He took the keys from the enemy's camp. And he took the chains. He broke it loose. The chains of captivity that bind you today. That sickness that has been coming over and over and over. Today is a good day to remind the enemy that chains were broken. Oh, I am no longer captive anymore because of the resurrection power. Because I have been fallen and I have fallen over and over again. But the Bible tells me with every falling there is a rising, so I'm rising. I'm here to decree and declare to you that whatsoever you're going through, there is a rising. And it is in this moment during this Easter season when we remember that resurrection power. This is not just an information or message that we come with. We are loaded with testimonies as you've heard. If we were all to speak about this falling and rising, we wouldn't have enough time. My sister tells me a story. When our parents were just gone, see, I was too young. I was only like about five years old when I lost my dad and mom. Lord, hope you know my story. But for her, her Saturday, and all of, most of you have experienced this when you've lost a loved one. See, here's the thing. The in-between, the cross and the resurrection has a lot to do with death. Everything just seems dead. It seems dead, right? There's no life to it. Maybe it's your job. It's, it looks dead because you just lost it. And now you're wondering what next. Maybe it's loss of a family member, and a lot of us have experienced this. 2020, 2021, you'll find at least somebody who has lost somebody. Maybe it's just your investment, it's gone. Maybe it's your identity, you're confused. Young ones, you're confused, you're asking your brain, who am I? Who am I really, who am I? You're questioning, you're asking. You're a child of God, created in his image for greater purpose and greater works. So let me go back to my story I was about to tell you about my sister, her dark Saturday. When her parents had just passed, it was only weeks past, she was in a boarding school, she's, a little, she's older than me. She came home to just in her mind to try to check, just like the disciples were checking at the grave. When she came home, everything was quiet. And that it dawned on her there was no more home. Everything had changed. Mom wasn't there, dad wasn't there. Her siblings were not there. And at that moment she realized, oh my God, there's really not a home to come to. There's not a home to come to. She was 14. And so she said, she sat on the one mango tree that we had at home. And she reminisced a lot of experiences with us. And she couldn't have helped but cry so hard. She cried for hours. She's like, how can this be? Just the other day, the crowd was so full in this compound. They came to encourage our family and promise we'll be there with you. We'll walk this journey with you. Children, do not fear. We're here with you. You've been through those moments? It always feels better when the crowd is still there, when things are fresh. That loved ones has just gone. You have a lot of that support. But the quiet moment comes, and this is the hardest moment. When you're alone, and you're sitting by that gravesite, you're seated by the tomb like Mary Magdalene, and you're saying, my Lord, I don't know what to do. All the promises seems like I don't see any light again. Are you really going to resurrect, or are you gone? What must I do? Where can I turn again? My sister told me she sat there and wept. And she was remembering me, and she's like, I wonder where my little sister is. 
I wonder if she will survive the hard times because hard times are ahead. We were all separated, going our different ways by different families. That was her dark Saturday, a holy Saturday for her. But then later, as the years went by, she began to realize there was a rising. There was a resurrection. It wasn't the end, and so she needed to push on. Push on with life regardless, because there is a promise. And that promise only comes by faith. That's what our, what our theme verse tells us. It comes by faith. You must hope against all hope says the scripture. Hoping against hope means things are not looking the way it should be. It's not lining up. It doesn't add up. But you keep hoping and you keep pressing on because you know Sunday is coming for sure. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. Yes, it's a dark, silent Saturday, so we sit and wait. I want to encourage you listening to me this morning. Maybe you're in that dark Saturday. And some of us are in the habit of trying to run away from it so fast. Because naturally we are not made to suffer. We hate suffering, we hate pain. This is why in the African culture we hate talking about death. We don't even do wills, living wills. Like, are you crazy? I, do you want me to die before my time? What will? So we don't talk about death just like that. But the fact remains, there is a time for dying and there's a time to resurrect. See, you cannot resurrect until you have been dead. Some of us need to learn to die in the flesh. You need to learn to die, die to that pain die to that disappointment, die to that insecurity, die, let it die and then let the seed resurrect. And when it resurrects, oh my God, it's a new level. Because when Christ came back, he came back glorified. He came back glorified, he was not man again. The flesh could not be hurt again. So I want to encourage you with this simple message that there is a rising. That's what I want to declare to you and prophesy to your life this morning. There is a rising. Hang on. Sit by that tomb and wait. Wait in your confusion. Don't run away elsewhere. Sit by the tomb. The empty tomb is empty. He's resurrected. And he's showing up. He will come and greet you. He will come and shake your hand and give you that hug. Say, my daughter, well done. I am here for you. There are those moments when we need to feel that hug. And I've felt it over and over. As I wind up my message, as I wind up my message here, I hope you're being encouraged. I hope you're being encouraged. We need to con constantly continue to remind ourselves that Christ descended to hell, took away the keys, broke the chains of death, and says, oh, death, where is your sting? It cannot sting anymore. Death has no more power. You see, the times we're living in now, we're so afraid. We're afraid for our children in this nation. We're afraid for our uh, African-American teens and young boys, when they go out wearing those hoodies, you don't know who is going to get shot next. I'm not being political here. I'm talking facts and realities. You become a suspect just because of how you look. And other nationalities are facing the same, the Asian nationalities. We experience this in our own countries just for the fact that you speak the way you do and your name is a certain way, it starts with a certain letter, you become a suspect. We're living in perilous times. We're living in a dark world. But the promise of the rising is so true and it's real. You must never forget that. So every morning, every day, as you get out of that house, shake off that disappointment, shake off that insecurity, shake off that shame. Because he took it all, all 
the choir sang so beautifully. He paid it all. He took the shame. Oh, he wore that thorn of crown that you may have a crown, a perfect crown, and sit like a king and a princess before him. So I want to encourage you. This Easter season, let's remember the power of the resurrection. We're not talking history. We're talking now, right now. I encourage you to rise up, rise up. Rise up, tell your spirit to rise up, tell your soul to rise up. That's what David did. He says, rise up, oh my soul, for I'll yet praise the Lord. Even in this dark Saturday morning, in this dark Saturday evening, I will yet praise the Lord. So rise up, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The two women, the two Marys, Mary Magdalene, oh, I love them. I love them so much. They trusted in their silence, and they trusted in the waiting. I want to encourage you to be still, remember, even as you wonder, pray and hope. And remember how much he loves you. For sure he will come to your rescue. He's going to transform. See, a lot of time we pray for our sorrows to be replaced by joy. But this Saturday reminds us this, that the sorrow, the sorrow must happen. The sorrow is not being replaced by joy. The sorrow is being transformed. It's being transformed into joy. The tomb, the tomb is being transformed into that womb. It becomes a womb that is ready to give birth to life. Hallelujah. So I don't know where you're seated, but I want to encourage you to come close to the tomb. Let's wait just a little longer for his for sure coming, the resurrection, the rising. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, please. Hallelujah. And as we wind up, this is an impromptu. She's not well, but Grace, if you let me, uh, Mama Mary, Suma, please, I need you to come. I don't know why I'm getting this direction, but I need you to come, get that mic, and I need you to raise up a prayer. Raise up a prayer for our community. Raise up a prayer for those who are sick that need healing. The Lord has blessed your hands and blessed your life with so much healing anointing that is so evident. Please declare it and decree to those who are listening. Somebody is in the hospital. Somebody is crying. They're mourning the loss of a, a, a loved one. Someone is trusting the Lord for that promise. Will you please pray? Feel free to pray in whatever way, whatever language, Kikuyu, Swahili, tongues, what? Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ante kwa kuwa mwana ulichukua sehemu yetu wanadamu tulipokuwa tumeanguka katika dhambi. Neema yako ilitutazama kutoka juu. Ukaona hatutaweza kuinuka. Bwana ukachukua sehemu yetu. Ante kwa kutukumbusha matendo makuli yote na pale kabla. Kwa kupigwa kwako Yesu tumepata kupona. Jamii zetu zimepona watoto wetu wamepona taifa limepona kwa ajili ya kupigwa kwako baba tunakuja mbele zako na kuanguka miguuni kwako tukipokea bora kipawa cha rehema cha uponyaji ulipopeana pale msalabani ulisema imekwisha 
kazi ya kumkomboa mwanadamu ili tunapokea rehema hizo sasa tuunganisha imani zetu kama kanisa tukinua vichwa zetu mbele zako tukijua Mungu kazi umeimaliza Sante Jehova kwa kila roho iliyolala na kuanguka. Sante kwa wale ambao wamejikunyata katika vitanda vyao, wanangojea uponyaji kutokana kwa kumuni. Wewe ni Mungu uonae. Jicho lako halinapazia. Unaona maisha yao. Unaona kilio chao. Waliamka Jehova. Wamekaa katika siku ya giza. Kwa hiyo ni Jumamosi. Wamejiuliza itakuwaaje. Lakini Bwana unalojibu inua maisha yao. Kusa mili yao. Kufua nyumba zao. Leta uponyaji katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Achili ya faraja zako Jehova. Nenda na watu wako Mungu wetu. Inua roho zako mfalme kwa kuwa Bwana umefufuka ili watu wako waweze kuwa na tumaini. Hii ni Jumapili Jehova. Ulipofufuka Bwana ufufuo uliamka. Uliamka kwa ajili yetu. Tunaamka kwa ajili yako mfalme. Tunajua tunapokaa Jumamosi sio mwisho kwa kuwa Jumapili inakuja. Weka tumaini ndani ya watu wako ya kwamba Bwana uko pamoja nao ufufuo ni upande wao na uzima uko juu yao sante Mungu wetu tupokea kipawa chako kwa shukrani katika jina la Yesu Kristo aliye Bwana na mwokozi wetu
Still, still. 